Kelvin and I am 12 years old. I was a patient here since 2010. I was not well, not, not very well. They came back, they, they just came back, they told me it was cancer. So we didn't lose hope. We say I will become better. Currently the situation is um, I am the only pediatric oncologist in the country, but the rest of the ward staff are all Tanzanian. So this is definitely a team effort. The parents who are poor, extremely, extremely poor, they regularly come with just the clothes on their back and the children maybe one change for Sunday. Um, they will spend whatever little money, they'll sell their house, their cows, they'll live on the ward for as long as it takes if that child will go home well. I just really wanted to be part of that and try and help the commitment be worthwhile. She liked us. She was hard if some some uh, children dies. It's, good, it's a good doctor. I came. I did my research. I met some incredible people. Like for example, Dr. Jane. She knew absolutely every child, all of their families, and could tell you about children who she had seen two, three years before. But she had very few drugs for a start. They were either dying because they didn't have any drugs, and that would be the vast majority of children, or they were dying of the complications of the few drugs that they did get. For the children who arrived in 2005, there was probably about a 10 or 12 percent long-term survival, if even that. <laughs> There was so much that we could do to improve things. And the key one was giving the children their chemotherapy free of charge. And so that was something we needed to work on and find donors to help us with. Children in Crossfire found me on the ward one day, elbow deep in children. and. Uh, they just liked what we were doing and could see the need and they just completely like believed in what we wanted to do. Children in Crossfire is assisting us with chemotherapy drugs. For the past two years I think we don't have the shortage of chemotherapy drugs. Everything is available for our children. So they help with, um, with drugs and any support we need from a medical side of things. But on the non-medical side of things, they have really um, taken a lot of the, the ideas I had and made them into reality, like our school. So um, we started with a few children and one volunteer under a tree. And we're soon to have three classrooms, two teachers, the teacher's assistant and a play therapist. And that's all come through Children in Crossfire. It's one thing to give them drugs, but if you don't give them hope, I don't know that the drugs will always work. In the future, I like to be a doctor because uh, to see my friends suffering here in the hospital, it was starting me. So he has probably six months of his treatment left to go. He, he's the type of child who could come back and help us on the ward as a doctor in the future. I like to work with Dr. Tush because she likes children and she likes teaching. She makes a good team. She wants all the nurses, all the doctors to work together. She can listen to my advice and I can listen to what she's, she wants to tell me. So Yasir is relatively new to us. You can see what just a happy kid he is. He's a smart, he's, he's, just, he's another great kid and we hope. Because although we have improved survival from 10% to possibly around 40-50%, that still means more than one in two children die. Whereas in resource-rich settings, it's um, eight out of ten children survive. So now we definitely couldn't do it without children in Crossfire. Just getting drugs for all of those children. That has to be, I guess, the primary concern is making sure everyone gets their treatment. Um, and, and then there's everything else, you know? And it's from small things to like, letting the children have footballs and clothing and, you know, extra food to eat, books in Kiswahili. We have come a long way, but um, there is still an awful lot of room for improvement.